Hey, Tebow. Hi, Mark. <laughs> How are you doing today? Um, yeah, could be wrong better. Question. Wrong question. It is the wrong question. Okay. Are you looking forward to our uh, Woodland Day on the on the twelfth? Yes. Uh, yes, I am. I'm really looking forward to that. I think it's going to be. Hopefully, it's going to be really positive for the for the team. Nice. Do you maybe want to explain in a in a few words what it is that we're going to do? Yeah. Before I go into that, I think. Um, I think partly as a as a result of of COVID, we've been working remotely for the vast amount of time um, for the vast majority of the time um, and that has meant that we've had less human connection um, we've tried to make our interactions um, at least in some of our sessions more fun and, and more engaging um, hence our, our gaming session we have every month and some of our interactive workshops but i think even though the team seems to be um, functioning well, I think having that human contact, um, I think is important for the team. So that's why I propose the um, the Woodland Team Building Day, which as you say, we're doing on the, on the 12th of August in, in two or three weeks now. Um, so what I thought was that we'd go to the site um, for the day, do a range of activities that I will describe in a second, and then give the team the opportunity, if they wanted to, to, to sleep over the night in the woods, which I thought would be really cool. And a, as you know, I'm fortunate enough because I was in, involved in a um, community benefit society a number of years ago, supporting young people in the outdoors that I have access to a woodland. Um, uh, a friend of mine, who's also a sword fighting student of mine, um, is kind of the manager of the, of the site. And I've asked him whether we could use it. And he was more than happy for us to use it. And in fact, he said that um, in exchange, which is a, a word that he uses um, quite frequently, actually, in terms of paying for something um, which may be another interesting discussion at some point actually but in in exchange he said well if you could do a little bit of work with your team um, on the site then don't worry about paying us so the exchange would be that you would improve our site with some of your um, with your team uh, and then you'd be able to use the site which i thought was pretty cool even cooler is that the activity that he's asked us to do is to reinforce the fortifications on a wooden fort in the woods. So that is a really um, cool activity, I think, um, to do, which probably a lot of people don't know, um, but you, you, me, you, and, and a few others are involved in, in, in live role play and sword fighting. So that's something that um, I think it's going to be a really, really cool project to do for the team. Yeah, I would, I would agree that that sounds, sounds like a, a win, 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 win situation to me where I'm like, okay, we're going to get to build a fort and <laughs> the other person is happy that we want to do that on their land. And then we also get to do a, uh, team building activity there so yeah, I think um, you know I, I come or my, my previous job I come from a culture where um, a team building or some kind of celebration because effectively it's not just a team building is it it's also a celebration for the success of the company over the last year or so you know we set ourselves a goal we, we hit that goal and now we're we're, sh we're we're taking the opportunity to acknowledge the fact that we've actually achieved something which yep. we're not particularly good at otherwise <laughs> so we have to force ourselves a bit um and yeah my my 
experience, let's say, in, in other organizations, it usually involves loud music, alcoholic beverages, and socially questionable behavior um, of different kinds, which, you know, I enjoy. Um, there's no problem with that either. Um, but it, it's, it's interesting that, you know, when we first started talking about um, what we could do as a team that we would all enjoy, um, that would get us out of the office a bit, and um, that wouldn't cost us a fortune. Uh, you know, we have a whole range of things that we can do, and, and, and um, the one that we now have planned uh, in about a month's time, or actually less, um, is obviously one of those. So it's I, I think it's it's interesting to rather than just throwing a bunch of money at something, having the reflex to look inside your team and see what capabilities do we have to do some fun stuff that other people might enjoy as well. That's maybe a bit more out of the ordinary, but because of that, or out of the ordinary for the other people, because yeah. of that is maybe a more unique experience as well. Um, so yeah, and all, I think, all that and to I say, I'm really looking forward to it as well. <laughs> And I think it's, uh, for me, part of it is to create um, memories, you know, and that's what I, I think an experience is. You, you, you've created some, hopefully, some strong memories uh, as, a, as a team. And, and yes, we obviously have, I mean, yourself and I have quite a broad range of, of, of skills. Um, and that's not to say we wouldn't be happy for someone else in the team who had some sort of other skills um to have an impact or even or even organize the team building I'd be, I'd be very open to that um but because of my skills with with bushcraft and forest school um that that lends itself to this sort of workshop in in the woods um and it seems like a lot of people in the team were were they were very positive when I proposed that to, to everybody in the in the first instance, and then it was down to me to design a design a program. I'll just talk you through that um, relatively briefly because actually we've only got a day, and I am inclined, or I have been inclined in the past, to try and fit far too much in um, to a day because I'm enthusiastic about certain activities, and I think, oh, we could do this, we could do that, we could do that. I think you're probably similar to me in in that respect. Um, but probably one thing that I've learned is, well, I, I certainly know that that everybody's not the same as me because I can actually deal with a relatively intense day, which is changing from one thing to another. Um, but my experience is that that's probably not typical and people need a little bit of space and they need to have some activities that have a little bit of downtime and then they can focus for a while and then they can have a little bit of a downtime again. Um, so Be before, we're, before yeah. you go into the program, I wanted to bounce an idea um, off you that, that I just had, yep. which is that I would argue um, that giving people the opportunity to add value to the team through a skill that maybe falls a bit outside of their normal job description or is, or is something that they just enjoy doing for their spare time. So you probably are passionate about or at least enjoy doing to a certain extent. Yep. I think that has two potential benefits for that person, You know, le let alone what, what benefit it might have for the team. It might also have the benefit, first of all, to sort of feel more accepted yep. in the team as as their entire person so you know we have I'm, i i it got triggered because we have the diversity and inclusion session tonight for uh, for woohoo thinking well actually the fact that you now can also show to the iqm team part of your um bushcraft knowledge and and all, all of that knowledge and and potentially the um the, the combat or tactical or strategic knowledge and, and for me also this the, the, the little bit of background in architecture that I have for, for the fort building and that kind of stuff which exposes another side of us to the team which potentially yes. integrates us better in the team. And allows people to connect actually. Yeah. 
and and you have a very tangible personal um positive impact on the team you know that if sure if you throw a party or something the the person who organizes the party also brings value but i think this is probably personally much more rewarding something like this so actually that speaks in favor of allowing if people want you don't want to put unnecessary pressure on people for something but to rotate it and let other people organize this kind of stuff too i was go i was going to say that because some people are well up for organizing stuff um and i've had a lot of experience of that so it's quite straightforward um for me to do that um but yes i would agree and i was having that thought process as well a, a younger member of the team for example um, if you say, right, you're now organizing that, that, that could be a, a drain on them. So encouraging them in the right way and supporting them to run their first session, if you like, someone who's, who's organized things before to support them to do that. Um, to, yes, they're going to learn. Yes, they may make some mistakes, but to allow them to have, yeah, to, to, to appropriately support them, essentially, not take over, but to appropriately support them so they successfully enable them to successfully run something i think would be would be would be really positive in fact it reminds me of a of a company that i do a bit of corporate team building for which is a company called softwire and they're a software development company um uh, i think they're based in highgate in london um and they're a really open-minded um company and i know the chef very well he's a friend of mine and the chef has a second role within the business and that role is morale officer so he is the person that organizes or at least facilitates or encourages people to create fun activities for the team um, so he gets me in to run some sword fighting every year he runs a jujitsu class um, he also encourages others to run all sorts of board gaming and, and different activities. And in fact, um, he told me about uh, an incident, a, a situation a, a two or three years ago, where they had some rooms in their office that they were going to be refurbishing, but it wasn't going to be for three months. And someone said, oh, we could do an escape room. So they posed that to the, the management and the management said, yeah, go for it. Build an escape room. So they built an, an escape room within their offices that they had there for three months. And in fact, they then used it as part of a recruitment process that they had at the time by putting their applicants through the team building. So it's really interesting how um, that allowing people to be creative and then create things um, then led to other opportunities. So again, created these extra wins um, within the company. And then you can think, oh, cool they allowed me to create be creative and do this thing and then it had a uh, a positive effect on the company so i thought that was a yeah really a, a good example of what we're talking about and i think in in that specific example um you know letting letting the team feed into what what you're doing and and how you're investing that time um i think is really important you know we we unfortunately still haven't put it in place but initially when we started this discussion about these more regular fun sessions which which up until now have all been gaming sessions that we do um we did also have or well i say we you you did have conversations with the different members of the team to identify what were the kind of things that they were interested in or that they yeah. would do in their spare time that they could poss potentially share with the rest of the team uh, and we were talking at some point about having an anime uh, watching evening yes um and and those kind of things so so allowing people to inject their own interests and ideas um i think is a is a definite um positive yeah cool well i'll 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 read out the schedule to you you can you can give me some feedback as well because it's just my draft one at the moment um so as I said, we're fortunate and able to to use a site, um, and this is um, the, the company's called Sacred Earth um, CBS, or um, and they 
they are really interested in increasing people's education and engaging people in the outdoors so they do conservation type things um, and they do one of the things they do is what's called an earth steward apprenticeship which is helping young people connect with the outdoors doing some survival type things but also learning to thrive rather than just survive in the outdoors so we've got a lovely lovely site with a with a, with a couple of lakes it's a 40 odd acre site with some woodland um, so it's a great site to, to hang out on so we're going to arrive on site i'm going to do a, a site brief and, and a safety brief initially with the team um, we're going to have a leisurely walk around the site just a, an amble around a site so that people can orient um, themselves then we are going to do some work on the fort and we're going to keep that quite um, defined because we're probably only going to have a couple of hours to do it so what i want is to, for us to have a relatively defined task that people can see a tangible result after their effort so there's going to be about eight or nine people and actually if you have a simple task you can some amount of time done um, if that's well co um, coordinated then we're going to have some packed lunch um, and then after that we're going to do a what I'd call a, a technical skills session which is fire by friction with bow drill and hand drill and that's one of the skills that I would probably classify myself as being expert on um, bushcraft is such a broad um, skill if you like and there's so many things that you can you can learn but that's my kind of top skill in bushcraft if you like something that I was um, probably a little bit obsessional about um, learning so we'll do that workshop after we've completed that workshop um, with my aim is that everybody within the team within that two hours will have um, created fire by fire by friction using my kits pre pre-made kits that i've i've made with with my tuition then after that we're um going to do a a more kind of chill craft session so i'll bring along some knives i'll do a little bit of nice safety and then people can sit around the fire and carve a spoon or carve a mallet or, or something something like that contribute to creating some of our cooking equipment um, that will cook on the fire then there will be a choice because it'll be the end of the actual working day so there will be a choice for the team if they if they don't want to stay because it's then not work time um, then they're they're welcome to, to leave the site at that point um, and then we are going to prepare and cook an evening meal together um, which will be cooked over an open fire i was thinking would it be quite cool to do a pit roast which many people haven't done um, the problem with a pit roast and i might be able to be talked into it by you tebow but the problem with a pit roast is it, it does require a lot more prep time it requires a, a pit to be dug it requires um uh granite granite rocks to be used um and it requires a fair bit of cooking time a, a fire to be lit in there the fire to go out and then it buried and so it's it's kind of like a four five hour process so that may not be possible um with with regards to this I mean um with, with regards to having a, a tangible project, if you will, with a with a concrete outcome and something that we have to manage as a team, I, I think it would be uh, potentially quite cool. Um, I mean, I, I would be well... Well, well I'll have that. another think about it. I need to... I've done it a few times. Um, it might require some rocks of a certain type, like granite, for example. Hello. Hi. I was just gonna um, say uh, when you when you talked about the fire by friction stuff. Yeah. Interesting fact. I just got a um, uh, a birthday gift from my mom 
um, that finally arrived about a month late and we had had a conversation over Christmas about um, gift wrapping and okay. how much paper it wastes and basically it's just a massive waste so I had suggested that maybe we should have at least for Christmas reusable gift wrapping because my, yep. mom, my mom's in fashion so she's got fabric galore um, and so she had wrapped my uh, my gift in um, in fabric and she tied it up with paracord oh, dear. so uh, at least well it, it definitely was paracord at some point but they removed the inner strands from it so I'm not sure how useful that's going to be don't think that's going to be strong enough um, I mean, it it is quite solid, and I actually watched Try um, a video yesterday, the 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 series that you uh, told me to have a look at, <laughs> and the yeah. guy the guy actually removed the inside of the paracord to create uh, basically a rain drip. Okay. Because it's hollow, and so the the water will actually okay. flow through and now I see it without the inside cord I can see how water would stay inside it's obviously not waterproof but there we go a little anecdote um, so yeah pit roast I mean I'd be up for it but it would it would definitely become a big part of it the is, day it is a bigger much bigger thing so yeah um, Maybe just maybe just a uh, open fire barbecue type situation. So I don't it. think that's I don't think that's too jam packed. I just as have a, a, as a schedule. I just have a doubt about the morning because right. people arriving, having a chat. Maybe somebody's fifteen minutes, half an hour late, um, and then having this construction project thingy, which. Well, we've very likely people, to go over time from people aren't going to be late, hopefully, because there's also an initial drop off somewhere else where we meet up or get together and go to site together. So it should be coordinated in that sense because there's a much better place to, to meet that's very easy to meet at, and then we would go down to the site together. So I've got an extra bit built in. Well, they can, pre, pre, pre they to can that still as well. be late at that first. Bit. Oh, yeah, yeah, they, they, they could be, but there's um. Hopefully, some built-in, built-in time. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. I mean, you you know how how much everybody likes the morning in IQM, so that's just consideration there. Yeah. Um, but no, the uh, the afternoon sounds absolutely fine, and the evening is obvi obviously pretty chill. Yep. Very nice, Mark. So I I know that we that we talked about at some point um, if this kind of thing works very well ah other thought that just popped into my mind if this yep. kind of things thing works very well and we do it for our own company um, why wouldn't we not integrate some of these elements into some of the, the work that we do with some of yep. our customers um, you know, we we use storytelling and and vulgarization in a lot of the stuff that we that we tell and teach, um, but potentially making something more of an experience could be even more effective um, for some of the stuff that we do. So that that was just one train of thought. But then there's another one that just popped into my head: is that we're actually not just inviting um, the core team to this day are we where we've been working with no. a number of people over the last weeks and months um who are well they're effectively uh, freelancers or, or contractors um but because that's one of our growth strategies we said well let's also invite these people to that team building because effectively they're also a, s a certain part of the team right so yep and that's an investment you know, it's a very, very minimal <laughs> money, um, financial investment, but it's a, it's a time investment, etc. And we made that conscious decision to include our whole ecosystem, if you will, exactly in that exactly um, in that experience, which is also not super common, I would say, but reflects who we want to be as a company. And it's quite nice because we've got a new starter um, who's starting three days before 
our, our team building and he's he's traveling a, a fair distance within the uk he was well up for coming down and meeting the team so i think that'd be a great start um for him because i from my experience in in companies i mean i i get to know some people within a comp in a new company if you like relatively quickly but it still takes i would say month to start to build up a more personal relationship or even longer with somebody and especially if it's remote um, longer still but i think with these face-to-face -face and doing non-work activities together that you achieve together i think that can ma could massively accelerate that that connection with with team members which i think um, also can have a really positive knock-on effect to, to how people positively interact with each other so maybe here's um, a thought and a question to <clears throat> wrap up our, our our conversation today because we we made the observation last week um with woohoo where we said well actually covid and the fact that we haven't been able to meet up as a remote team because we're completely completely remote um for the for the woohoo team um has had a morale impact and an impact on on the drive and the, um, uh, and the motivation of the team and so because we are now um, in the process of switching to being more remote or being completely remote with IQM, we yep. need to have some kind of strategy in place that allows the team to still function effectively as a team. Um, so I'm wondering to what extent these kind of things, these kind of events need to be built in um, and are actually critical to the success of the business yeah um and how often should they happen um yeah basically question don't know if you if you have well i thoughts. i've thought about that a little bit i think i think that's going to be a challenge because the stuff that i've seen on on in the media or in, uh, in, in in social media and things like that are talking about some people saying oh working from home has got massive benefits i'm able to do this 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 and this okay and then i've heard other views that were saying yeah but it's actually dangerous because uh, dangerous in in the um that connection between teams could be eroded so i mean there have been obviously remote teams for uh, you know for years now some remote teams that seem to have been working successfully um but i think that again as I've, as we've just been discussing that human connection I, I think there's it's difficult to substitute for that, um, especially for some people. So for people that might find it a little bit more difficult to connect remotely, um, if if they are given an environment, given the right support to integrate, to to chat with people, to be creative together, I think that has got to have a positive impact on the team. So yes, I, th I think that's essential. What's coming into my head is maybe something like that should be done quarterly-ish um, for a remote team, but it obviously depends on that kind of intervention that you have, whether it's a an afternoon or you know a, a, a few hours sports activity or an, an afternoon or whether it's a day or whether it's a week in a, in a different country together, which I know some teams do as well, um, you know, I don't know. I think that's probably dependent on on the team, the industry, and a, a whole range of other factors. So, and and this this thought got triggered um, this afternoon again for me because you know we're now looking into hiring a designer, um, yep. and I've got a reasonably easy access into the design community in the Netherlands or at least a part of the Netherlands um, to access you know uh, recent graduates or, or, or more junior and even more experienced people there and uh, the question that immediately came up was is it is it potentially a remote position and you know because yeah. we've been talking about that yes yes it potentially potentially is a, a completely remote position um, I don't I don't see a problem with that but it does mean that we need to take these kind of things into account and figure them out. And that's why I've changed the bullet from a, a, a bullet to a question mark, because this is actually an assumption, isn't it? You know, some of these other things are things that we've 
at least to a certain extent tested um, but this last one is, is is a working assumption which I think we're both in agreement on that it's a it's a sensible assumption but still you know in two three years from now we'll look back at this and at least have a much more um, solid um, view on this based on our experience which might be still very much in line with the, what we're saying now or completely different yeah I'm, I'm just thinking that it, it's interesting to also expose that kind of reasoning or that kind of reflection between the two of us or, or within our organization because at least today, today's conversation was much less um, a foregone conclusion of we know we're in agreement we had a bit of a discussion about what do you think of the agenda for the Woodland Day and and these are some questions that we haven't quite figured out yet um, but this is what we think and, and this is potentially how we're going to approach it which you know I think is also potentially interesting any closing thoughts? Um, it's one that springs to mind that there's there's also quite a lot of scientific evidence now that being in nature helps with, with mental health. And I think um, I've had some struggles. Um, I found it difficult over the last kind of six to eight, eight months. Um, so getting outside, having that, that that relaxation being outside in the in the woods doing these physical tasks as well which can also be good for kind of mental health so i think it becomes that that release as well that allows your brain to relax um hopefully for a day even though i'm organizing it but I, it's it's relatively straightforward actually so i think i'm still going to be able to to chill out um yep no i i agree um that's a an added benefit of what we what we chose to do. Yeah. Um, just to we especially when you pay people to sit in front of a screen all day and interact very little with other humans, going outside, doing something physical, doing something social. I think's a must. Yeah. Well, thank you, Mark. Cool.